Can you compare and contrast the, uh, the difference between you know, ox working out with oxygen and the people breathing hydrogen? And Results of working out with oxygen are very different from what you'd expect for working out with hydrogen. So, you know, hydrogen per se is an H2. ends up being a very freely mobile because it's such a tiny atom or tiny molecule that once you breathe it in, it dissolves or diffuses through tissue. But basically, it's going to present a very accessible or available a super antioxidant and the body makes hydrogen all the time it's you know made in the gut so you know people end up with deficient hydrogen water alkalizer electrolysis process ends up creating hydrogen so that alkalized water from the water processors ends up being a hydrogen donor so really they're hydrogen sources and so those sources so to me hydrogen by whatever route is going to have about the same effect but it's going to be mostly antioxidant by character you know oxygen is a substrate for about every metabolic process so like for example somebody gets on livo2 and they resolve an oxygen deficiency you know the result of that workout can be dramatic but if you take somebody that resolves a hydrogen deficiency the result of that resolving that deficiency is not likely to be dramatic. I can show you uh, brain tests over a period of hours where somebody worked out with LIVO2 and had a brain functional intelligence of X, and then two hours later they had a functional intelligence of Y. It's just that oxygen deficiency is a lot more common and more systemically damaging than hydrogen deficiency. So when you resolve that deficiency, all of a sudden you see things come right back. Okay, so, and then when you maintain the oxygen at a higher level, you know, that's where you get into you know, kind of age modulation. So a typical result that you'll see like with oxygen training, and I don't mean once, I mean like three times a week for a couple of months. When you look at that list of problems, like, wow, that problem came online X, Y, Z, so that after you've been accumulating these things for 20 years, you're like, wow, the list is getting pretty long. So as a rule, or you know, general observation is that LIVO2 users are usually able to roll that list of stuff back about 15 years. With oxygen transport compromised to a particular tissue, all right, it takes about 15 years for that tissue to kind of drift off and become unsalvageable. So what's happening is that you know by reestablishing the oxygen incrementally and keeping it high, then actually you're able to bring back tissues that have been hindered by this tourniquet injury that I was mentioning earlier. So as you activate blood flow, you know, endurance, strength, tone, etc., just everything comes back to its, or every cell comes more back to its ability to manufacture energy, which is the primary mechanism of loss of quality, loss of function that goes on as we age. And usually it's the oxygen that enables that fixing. You don't get that long list kind of thing you know, by supplementing hydrogen to bring it back to the specific question. Not to say hydrogen is not valuable or to say that you shouldn't or couldn't use both of them at the same time. I have avoided including hydrogen in our product because uh, mixing hydrogen and oxygen is uh, not a, <laughs> it, it has a potential for uh, reaction.